The Green Bay Packers unveil new plans for their title town development. Plus, we'll tell you which Wisconsin city has one of the hottest commercial real estate markets in the country. We'll have all that and much more. Keep watching. Your real estate news starts now. Thank you for watching the Real Estate News. I'm your host, Stacey Hansen. Let's take a look at your headlines. The Green Bay Packers expect to break ground on their new Town district this fall. The district will cover the 34 acres just west of Lambeau Field. It will include a 10-acre public plaza designed as a park-like setting with year-round activities open to the public. There will also be a Lodge Kohler Hotel built and managed by Kohler Company. It will be a four-diamond hotel offering across-the-street lodging for Packers fans. Bell & Health will also build a 30,000-square-foot sports medicine clinic on the grounds for the ultimate tailgating experience. The new Hinterland Restaurant and Brewery will have the retractable exterior walls paired with heated concrete and heated lamps for outside. Future development on the remaining 16 acres will call for additional retail establishments and residential structures. Targeted completion is set for fall of 2017, with the Packers investing approximately $65 million into title. Town. Milwaukee, Wisconsin has been named as one of the five secondary office, office markets to watch in the U.S. Commercial real estate firm JLL says the office market in downtown Milwaukee is seeing a renewed sense of interest from investors. Johnson Controls is planning a 50-story corporate headquarters and Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance is building a 32-story tower there. Also, more than 500,000 square feet of Class B office space is being taken off the market to convert to multifamily housing. Investors in office properties have been selling higher, seeing higher returns in secondary markets like Milwaukee, and with the current urbanization movement led by younger workers, these markets are expected to remain very attractive to investors. Well, Trulia has discovered what Americans want in their dream homes. One surprising finding of their new study is that Americans are not fans of big mansions. 44% of people said they want an average-sized home between 1,400 and 2,600 square feet. Also, most respondents gravitated toward modern homes with newer features versus older homes. Another finding was that most Americans do not want to live in the heart of a big city. People in the Midwest in particular said they wanted to live in the suburbs. As for the most popular dream home features, the majority of people want a backyard deck. The next most popular features were a gourmet kitchen, an open floor plan, and a balcony with a view. Trying to choose between buying a home or building one? The Realty Biz News website has some tips to consider. First, know what you want in a neighborhood. An existing house will be in a neighborhood that's already fairly established. In a new development, you may have building going on around you for years, and you'll need to wait for trees to mature and grass to establish roots. They suggest making a list of the pros and cons in regard to convenience, too. In an existing home, you may miss out on some of the features you wanted, while in a new build, you'll need to invest a lot of time into the process. The site also suggests that the final choice could come down to cost. It may be easy easier to get pre-qualified for a low-rate loan when purchasing an existing home. Cost savings with new construction come with everything being newly installed. You likely wouldn't see any high-cost repairs for a while on those types of homes. That's a lot to think about there. Well, home flippers should proceed with caution in the next six months to a year, according to RealtyTrack. They warn that the pool of prospective buyers could shrink as home price appreciation slows and interest rates potentially increase. Flipping is typically defined as buying a distressed home, renovating it, and then reselling it in the same calendar year. It was popular during the housing boom, but it's becoming harder to do today as lower-priced distressed homes become harder to find across the country. While house flips are riskier today, they do appear to be more lucrative. House flips made up only 4.5% of home sales in the second quarter of 2015, but gross returns on investment on these has increased to nearly 36%. Chicago is one city where home flippers are still seeing some of the best gross returns. Stick around, we'll be right back with more after this. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. With me now is Doug Moot. He's a real estate consultant at Keller Williams. Welcome, Doug. So nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. Now, how did you get into real estate? 
Well, I'm from a family of realtors. My mom has been a real estate consultant for since 1977, and I grew up in the area. And even though I graduated from the University of Wisconsin with a construction engineering degree, she finally recruited me in to try real estate full time, which I've been doing for over 15 years. So in her mind, it was probably inevitable, huh? <laughs> yes, she's been trying to recruit me for many years prior to that. I bet. Well, now what makes you different from other agents out there? Well, I'm a full-time agent and I know the neighborhoods well having grown up here. But the big thing is my marketing. I really pride myself on that. I think the biggest thing is not only photographs, but videos. So I take enhanced videos, I have a drone, so I take many different angles, many different types, and then I expose it through multiple mediums. Wow, that sounds really cool. Yes. So what listings do you have right now? Well, I have a couple of nice ones. Uh, one is on Springer Road, just north of Lake Mills, and it's on 55 acres, surrounded by DNR and Audubon land, so it's very much a retreat, I guess is the best way to describe it. Only five minutes off the interstate, so somebody from Madison or Milwaukee definitely could make this their own little sanctuary. It's priced at $1,350,000. It's a 12-year-old home, 6,000 plus square feet, has a pond in the back that you can paddle on with a kayak or canoe, 55 acres that has a combination of woods, the pond, pasture, wonderful wildlife as a result. I also have a wonderful listing on the golf course of the Stoughton Country Club at 3026 Linaroo Drive, and that is about also a nine-year-old home and it's over 4,000 square feet, all brick with a pool on one of the tee boxes to the 14th green, and just a wonderful home with high-end finishes, and that one's for $599,900. I do have about four other listings, ranging in price from $175,000 to $225,000 within Madison, but the nice thing about those is they're all on about half-acre lots or larger, so they offer a nice type of setting, yet you're still within the city conveniences. Wow, those all sound amazing. Those are going to go quickly, I think. I hope so. <laughs> so any advice for buyers out there that are maybe looking at these properties or others out there? Well, the interest rates have been inching up, which the Federal Reserve has been talking about. They're going to increase it, which they haven't, but the local lending institutions have. They've gone up about a half a percent. And even though less listings tend to come on the market later in the year, it's a good time to start getting prepared so you're ready come next spring and hopefully able to take advantage before the rates go up even higher. So um, just a couple minutes left. Um, what, do you have, what have you learned from working in real estate? I guess the biggest thing is timing. I've underestimated timing until I got into real estate and it's amazing the way things work out or maybe not go in your favor. So I realize being full time is very advantageous. Being on the ball, it feels like I'm working seven days a week. So unfortunately, I miss all of summer, which is one of our peak seasons with spring. So that and recognizing the values in Madison. I not only am a realtor, but I also am a property manager, and that's what got me into real estate from the get-go. And it's just a great value in Madison because of the strong economy, the local government, the large university, and it's a wonderful place to live. So I strongly recommend people get into home ownership. Well, that's absolutely right. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, Doug. It was wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. And you stay tuned. We'll have more real estate news coming up next. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. With me now is Kirsten Goggin from Century 21 Affiliated. Welcome back, Kirsten. Thanks for having me. How are you this week? I'm doing well. Now, I learned something new about you. You actually have the ABR designation. What is that That's exactly? Right. Sure. Well, uh, that means that I'm an accredited buyer's representative. So it's just extra education and uh, points. It, it, it specializes in working with buyers. I've got many different uh, designations. However, this one specifically is for buyers. So first time buyers um, or investment buyers, whatever you're looking for, I can help. So now buyers can contact you instead of the listing agent. Why would you recommend that they should or could do that? Sure, well, a lot of people just don't understand uh, how it all works. So uh, buyers don't know that they can have a buyer's agent work for them and represent them so they can negotiate for them pull full comparables to make sure they're not over 
uh, overpaying for a property, make sure they request all of the proper inspections like radon, well septic, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just really look out for them. Um, it's actually a seller paid cost. So to do that, it's free. And if you call the listing agent directly, like off a sign or something, that agent's gonna get the whole, per, um, so let's say it's 6% that, it, that the seller agreed to pay to sell their house. 3% of that goes to the listing agent, 3% goes to whoever brings the buyer. So the listing agent will get all 6% and, you're, and work all for the seller versus the seller paying the buyer's agent 3% and you have someone looking out for you. So that actually makes a lot of sense to do that. Well, it's free too, so well to the buyer anyway. Right, why not? Now, another cool thing that I just learned about you is I hear that you sponsor housewarmings. <laughs> Tell us about that. I do. Well, you know, it should be fun, you know, so once once we get it closed and you're all settled and you get unpacked and everything, uh, you just let me know when your housewarming is and I will bring a cooler. I used to bring around a, a kegerator with <laughs> beer in it, but instead of that now I've got a big cooler uh, and I just, that way you can get some variety, you can keep the extra cans so you don't feel pushed to do keg stands at the end of the night to finish it off. But um, yeah, you just got to have some fun. So I bring the beer and, and you bring the fun. So just a little bit of time left. Any listings you want to tell us about? Yes. So 2257 Manly Drive is still available. Can't believe it. We do have a second showing. I, yep, that just happened. So it might be gone. But if you want to check it out, um, you can check out that one and all of my listings at kjsellsmadison.com. Well, sounds good. Thanks so much. It was so nice to talk to you again, Kirsten. See you next week. All right. We'll see you then. And you stay tuned. We'll have more right after this. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. With me now is Ginger Hauser. She's the president and owner of Hauser Estates Realty. Welcome, Ginger. So nice to have you here. Great. Thanks for having me. So what do you do there at Hauser Estates Realty? Well, we're different than any other real estate firm in Dane County. Mainly, we've always focused on real estate investment. Uh, we do help the occasional buyers, sellers, but mainly we've worked with real estate investors, such as myself and my partners. Um, currently, we are taking homes in the Dane County area that have been run down, need repairs, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff that we have seen. Uh, we do all the necessary repairs, updates to that home to make it move in ready for a new home buyer. So Currently this term is known as flipping or rehabbing. So how long have you been in business? Um, I have been in business, I started uh, real estate investing actually in 2003 buying rental properties and then got uh, my real estate broker's license and started my own real estate for firm in 2004 and then started to um, investing in real estate rehabbing in 2008 and found partners to, to invest with me. So how, how did you get started then in the very beginning you know, of all things to do, how did you choose this? Well, when the market took a crash in 2008 and I could not get uh, loans from lenders anymore for rental properties because they required a large amount of money down, usually 25 to 30% down, I went out and seeked out private money investors to partner up with me using my skills of what I knew how to do and their money to buy these homes cash. Now that's kind of risky though, isn't it, to do? I mean, have you ever not been able to, to flip one? No, we have always flipped. I have to knock on wood. We have always been able to flip the house, but it is risky. Some of the properties that we buy, just like the show you see on TV, Flip or Flop, uh, we have not been able to see the inside of the properties. Maybe you get to look through a window, talk to neighbors, things like that, but sometimes you don't get to see the whole package. And so you really got to know how to calculate your cost to make up for that so you don't get yourself in the red. Wow. So how do you know whether a home is worth taking the risk on? Like I said, you, it, just, it comes with experience. After doing so many of them, um, you kind of get a feel you know, you take a look at the outside, you do as much history on the property as you can to kind of know what you're getting. And where do you find these properties? Most of the properties that we find are foreclosures, um, either at auction or are listed on the multiple listing service. They're for, are listed as REOs, real estate owned, the bank owns them. Um, once in a while, I do have advertisements out there, like such as my truck, that say we buy houses cash. So I will get an, an occasional call on that. And they've panned out once in a while, but I would say probably about 98% are foreclosures. And what role do you play? Do you actually work on the properties yourself? I basically, I am the one that goes out and finds all the properties. I have to calculate the after repair value, I meaning what are we going to sell it for so we know what we can buy it for and if we're going to have enough margin to make money. So then I also have to calculate all the repairs, all the holding costs, selling costs, 
I hire all the general contractors, do all the design work, then I stage them and list them for sale. Wow, that's a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. But well worth it, it seems. Um, as far as designing them, how do you know what's going to sell or what do you find really reels people in as far as what, they, what they're looking for? I pretty much try to keep it very neutral. Um, like with paint colors, we don't get too carried away with, you know, doing different colors in different rooms. Try to keep a neutral palette. Usually we do beige walls, you know, a little deeper beige and then white ceilings and then do some accents with tiles and, and things like that, granite countertops. But trying to keep it neutral, not going off the beaten path, not trying to make it too avant-garde or modern where, you know, it's not going to attract to the majority of the buyers. What about appliances? Do you go real high end or just try to go middle of the road? Depends or? on the house. I mean, most of the time we always do stainless steel uh, appliances. Once in a while we'll do black depending on the house. But if it's a higher end home, like we just sold a $400,000 house, then we're going to do a little nicer stainless steel property than, or stainless steel appliance versus one that's, you know, medium, medium of the road. But then we're going to go with a little lower end, maybe like Frigidaire. So it's a lot of work, but it sounds like you love it. Why do you continue to rehab these houses? Well, we feel like we are helping the economy. We are making a big difference in the market. Whenever a foreclosure comes out there, it affects the neighborhood values. So, you know, appraisers have to take those into consideration when they do their appraisals on home sales. So we're helping the economy by rehabbing these homes, making them retail value again. Plus, we're also hiring contractors. So we have about 10 contractors on our team alone. Plus, we're putting in work real estate agents and lenders and you know insurance and title. Anybody that is involved with the real estate tra transaction, we're putting to work. And let's face it, I do make a great living at this as well, too. Exactly. Um, so thanks so much for Ginger. That was really informative. I'm so glad you came on today. Great. Thank you so much for having me. And you stay tuned. We'll have more right after this. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. With me now is Betsy Rapask. She's the owner of Dwell Hop. Welcome, Betsy. So nice to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. Now I have to ask you, what would you say are some misconceptions that people have when it comes to buying or selling homes? We really feel like people don't understand that they have a choice when it comes to buying or selling their home, that there are options other than the full 6% listing if you're willing to do a little bit of the work yourself. So what would somebody have to do? Like what kind of work would they need to do? Um, it's if you're willing to do some of the staging, if you're willing to host your own open houses, if you're comfortable doing negotiation, and some of it can be a bit intimidating, and that's where we're able to offer them some assistance with the parts they're uncomfortable with, and then you can save a bit of money by doing the pieces that you do feel comfortable. So what different options do you have for people? We offer a range of services. So we have we started a flat fee where we come in and we do professional photos, and we have this thing called a 3D showcase, so we help you really market your home property. Properly, sorry. <laughs> and the reason we do that is we feel like as much as many people are like, oh, I can take pictures on my phone. Professional photos are really one of the few things that you need help on. And then beyond that, we can step in and we can offer negotiation service for 1%, and we can go all the way up to through our full, full service listing, which includes all of our services, and that's for a 2% commission, and then we, we let you choose how much you want to offer the buyer's agent. So how do you know what level of service is best for somebody or how should somebody decide that? You really have to educate yourself on the process and we have some, some sorry, resources on our website that you can look through or you can do some research on your own. If you understand the process then you can really evaluate which pieces you feel comfortable with and then you can get help on the ones that you don't feel comfortable with. For example, if you're comfortable doing open houses because you're a fairly personal person but negotiation really scares you, that's where we can step in and help you. Um, we do have one property that we actually put on the market yesterday where the seller has elected to just use our marketing package and he's going to do the rest of it himself. He's actually pulled it off of MLS or we never put it on MLS because he's hoping to get a buyer who doesn't have an agent so he can save both sides of the commission. And that property is 4661 Chalet Street in Middleton and it's going for $560,000. It's a four bedroom, three bath with an 1100 square foot garage that fits three cars probably plus your boat. Um, so that one's, he'd be really excited to sell that one. Wow, that sounds really nice. Now you mentioned um, hosting your own open house. Um, what advice would you give to people so that wouldn't be awkward, you know, to say, oh, here's my home, Walk, <laughs> come on in. How would somebody go about doing that? People are really pretty friendly when it comes to open houses. I like hosting open houses. So when we, when we help people prepare to host their own, 
it's the same way as if you were preparing it for a showing. It's clean. You want to make sure, you know, as if you were having guests over. And that's how we tell people to view it, is that these are your guests. And a lot of times a homeowner having their own open house, you know more about your home than I do. I don't live in your house. And so you can just, just treat it as if they're your guests and give them the tour of your home and tell them what it's like to live there. And we do offer um, open house packages where we rent them the signs and print out all the papers for them. So we help them get set up like logistically. And then it's just a matter of being comfortable having people over. What would you say to people, um, you know, what are some important things to look for when they're choosing an agent to work with? You really want to feel comfortable with them. And that's where we say, if you, the better you educate yourself on the process, the better you'll be able to evaluate the strength of the agent. Um, because there's, <laughs> there's certain aspects that you might not think about if you hadn't done the research. And one of the big ones, which I've already gone over, is the professional photos. That's something we really, really stress, that whether you work with us or any other agent, that you use those. Because a lot of agents will try to save money of their own, because when you market a property, it does come out of our commission. Um, and they'll try to save the money by taking the photos themselves. And so we really say that's kind of a red flag. You really should insist on professional photos. That really is a good point, too, because that's the first thing people see. And if they don't like the photos, they're not going to come check out your property. Exactly. It's kind of like online dating. If they don't like your profile picture, they're never going to step through the door. So just a couple seconds left. How can people contact you if they have more questions to ask you? They can reach out to us on our website, or they can give us a phone call. Or um, we do actually have an open house this Sunday. At, 1138 South Perry Street in Oregon and I'll be there and I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody wants to stop by. Well great, thanks so much for coming by here today Betsy, it was nice to talk to you. Thanks for having me. And you stay tuned, we'll have more right after this. From all of us here, I want to thank our guests for stopping by and all of you for tuning in to your real estate news. I'm Stacey Hansen. We'll see you next time.